In this screencast, we'll be giving an introduction into the newly added console application to the WSO2 Identity Server. My name is Brian Silva and I'm a software engineer at WSO2 Identity Server team. This application will be released as a public beta along with the Identity Server 5.11.0 release and will contain most of the features that are available in the Identity Server Management Console. This application will potentially replace the management console in future releases. Now let's look at the available features. We have applications, identity providers, users, groups and roles, approvals, user stores, attribute dialects, ORDC scopes, certificates, email templates and configurations. Before we dive into the demonstration, let's learn about some exciting facts about the new console. It is written using React, which is an extremely popular open source JavaScript frontend library among developers. And also, it consumes the REST APIs in WSO2 Identity Server. The application uses the newly implemented JavaScript OpenID Connect SDK under the hood. One of the prime objectives of the new application is to enhance the user experience, keeping it user friendly for any type of developer. The application can also be customized to your branding needs by changing the logos and color schemes and also it can be localized to cater your needs. The application can be configured using the deployment TOML file which aligns with the new configuration model introduced with our previous releases. Now that we have some context, let's jump into the demonstration. First, we need to download the WSO2 identity server 5.11.0 release. To do this, go to WSO2 website and from the main navigation, click on products and select identity server from the set of options. And when you are on the identity server page, click on the download button and select your preferred installation option. For this demo, I will be using the macOS installer. If you have any issues with the installation, please refer to our official documentation. Now we are done with installation, I will start up the server. Based on your operating system, the startup steps will be different. Once the server is up and running, you will be able to see the URL of the console application in the server logs. Navigate to that URL using your browser. At the login page, give your username and password. If you are running the application for the first time, and if you haven't changed the super admin username and password, you'll be able to use admin as the username and password and log into the application. Since I have created the user for myself, I'll be using those credentials for the login. We have landed on the console. Right away, you'll be able to identify several key components in the application. At the top left corner, you'll be able to see the console branding along with the beta label. And on the far right, you'll be able to see a user dropdown with the links to my account, which was previously known as user portal, and there's a link to initiate a logout. There are two main sections in the applications, develop and manage, and these could be switched using the tabs provided. Features have been grouped into these two categories to give better context separation. Let's look at the applications feature. You can configure applications here and use WSO2 identity servers capabilities to enable single sign-on, user provisioning, adaptive authentication, and much more. This feature was referred to as service providers in the management console. Initially, you will be presented with the application listing, and you can filter this list using the advanced filter options. To create an application, click on the new applications button. First, you will be asked to select the application type. We have added a predefined set of templates such as web application, single page application, desktop and mobile so that you could easily configure applications using recommended settings. If you want to create a fully custom application, you can use the custom application option here. For the purpose of this demo, I will create a single page application. Now let's look at the edit page. From the general tab, you will be able to configure the basic settings of the application. And at the bottom, you will find a danger zone which has an option to delete the application. In the access tab, all the protocols configured for this application will be listed. 
Since this application was created using the single page application template, OpenID Connect protocol will be pre-configured with some recommended settings like authorization code flow with PKCE and public client option. If you want to add a new protocol, you can click on the new protocol button and follow the steps in the wizard to get it added to this application. In the attributes tab, you can configure the attributes required for your application. And in the sign on methods tab, you can configure the authentication flow of the application. We have revamped the experience of adding multi-factor authentication steps using drag and drop functionality. If you wish to configure an adaptive authentication flow, you can use the script editor which has some useful templates to get started. In the provisioning tab, you can configure inbound and outbound provisioning settings. And finally, we have an advanced tab where you can configure some advanced settings like SaaS or if you wish to skip consents, you can do that here as well. Now let's look at the identity providers feature. The listing is exactly similar to applications and if you want to add a new IDP, you can press the new identity provider button. For your convenience, we have included some useful templates to get started. If you want a fully custom IDP, you can use the expert mode option. For this demo, I will proceed with the OpenID Connect template. Once you create the IDP, you will be directed to this edit page. In the general tab, you can configure the basic settings and also add certificates for the newly created identity provider. Towards the bottom, we have included a danger zone, which has options to disable the IDP or to delete it. In the attributes tab, you can perform tasks related to attributes. In the authentication tab, authenticators that are configured for this IDP will be listed. Since I used the OpenID Connect template, OpenID Connector has been already configured. If you wish to add more than one connector, you can click on the new authenticator button and add a different authenticator to your identity provider. In the outbound provisioning tab, you can configure outbound provisioning connectors for your identity provider. And also, if you wish to configure just-in-time provisioning, there's a section for that as well. And finally, same as applications, we have an advanced settings section where you can configure some additional settings required for your identity provider. Now let's move on to the users feature. The entry point will be the user listing which supports various filter options. If you want to create a new user, you can click on the new user button and follow the steps in the wizard. In the user's edit page, you have options to configure the user for your liking. In the profile tab, which is the first, you can edit the user's profile and also perform password related operations. At the bottom, we have included a danger zone which can be used to lock or delete the user. In the Groups tab, you can add or remove groups that the user is assigned to. And in the Roles tab, you can configure roles for the user. In the Active Sessions tab, you can inspect the sessions that the user is currently active on. And you have options to selectively terminate sessions or to terminate all the active sessions that the user is active. In the groups feature, you can create and manage user groups and assign permissions to them. Now I will create a new user group by clicking on the new group button. Similar to the other features that we looked at, we have categorized the edit page to different sections. You have options to edit basic settings and to delete the group in the basic step. In the users step, you can add new users to the group or remove any existing users from the user group. In the roles step, we have options to add or remove roles from the user group. Now that we have looked at user groups, let's have a look at roles. The listing is similar to that of other features and you can click on the new role button 
to add a new row. In the edit page, we have options to edit the basics, delete the role, and to configure permissions, groups, and users in the role. In the approvals feature, you have options to review and manage workflow approvals. You can check the status of the approval even from the listing. And if you want to inspect more details about a specific approval, you can click on the list item. In the pop-up, you can observe some useful information like the priority and assignees. And also, you have options to claim, approve or reject it as well. If you want to add a new user store to the system, you can do that by using the user stores feature. You can select the user store type and follow the easy setup guide in order to easily add a user store that you wish. And in the edit page, you have a lot of options to further configure your user store up to your liking. The attribute dialects feature can be used to create and manage attribute dialects. This feature was referred to as claims in the management console. The local dialect is clearly separated from the other external dialects to give better experience. If you wish to manage ORDC scopes, you can do that by using this feature. You can inspect and configure the existing scopes and add new scopes from the listing page. In the edit page, you have options to add or remove attributes bound to a certain score. You can create and manage certificates in a key store by using the certificates feature. You have options to filter the certificates list and also you can view or export certificates straight from the listing page with ease. Now let's move on to the configuration section. We have included a variety of configuration options that can be used to customize your identity server experience. If you wish to customize email templates, you can do so using the email templates option. And if you wish to configure a GitHub repository to work with the identity server, you can use the remote configuration options. Also, we have options to customize the password policies, use onboarding, login attempts, account management, and also any other governance connectors that you plug into the identity server. We have reached the end of this screencast. I hope that you will enjoy the new console application, and I believe that it will provide a positive use experience. If you have any issues that you want to clarify, reach us using our Slack channel. Thank you for using WSO2 Identity Server.